The oil and gas industry has a long history and tradition of the use and development of advanced technologies. Uh, we've heard about this from several speakers, and I might add that this is a very, very important point. I mean, I'm, in my position, I was once in the faculty of a university. Uh, many of our best students in physics went into the oil and gas sector. So I just want to make it clear that when I discuss some of the adaptations of aerospace and defense, I'm not trying to say that aerospace and defense has been well ahead of oil and gas, but they are basically have been working in different directions. Here's just some examples that I, that I cooked up before I heard the talks today on some of the technologies, advanced technologies in the oil and gas industry, and they're quite close to what we've heard from, for example, Dr. Bachran uh, previously. The aerospace and defense industry has also been in the forefront of technological development. Now, there are several areas that overlap with the developments in the oil and gas industry, but typically the two have taken very different directions, and we can see this also in a lot of the, uh, a lot of the talks that we've been hearing today. Um, the emphasis has been different. The kinds of technologies has been much more, much, much more work on uh, mechanical engineering, large mechanical engineering, and of course on control systems as well. Now, there's much that the aerospace and defense and oil and gas industry can learn from each other, but this presentation is, of course, on, on the current and potential contribution of aerospace and defense to oil and gas. Okay. Um, the oil and gas industry has faced and is facing a wide range of new challenges. Some of these challenges fa uh, parallel those faced by aerospace and defense. As an example, the defense industry has expanded in the last decade or two from classical areas of military defense to the area of security, sometimes known as homeland security. Security, of course, has become a major issue in, for the oil and gas industry, at least in some areas, and we haven't heard a lot about this today, but I'll discuss a little bit of it. Um, however, there are other new challenges faced by oil and gas, especially in the environmental area, and in particular for the unconventional oil and gas sector. Such challenges and others could benefit greatly from technologies developed both for military as well as for the aerospace and for aircraft and space applications. What I'd like to do today is, in order to clarify this point, I'd like to offer a few broad examples of challenges in the oil and gas industry, challenges which have benefited from or which may benefit in the future from technological developments in aerospace and defense. The first example, which is probably the most obvious example, is the example of security, basically securing oil and gas installations. Major installations are a strategic asset, and as such, in many parts of the world require tight security against a wide range of threats. Technology adaptation, past, present, and future, characterizes this field. We have seen in the, in, the, in the aerospace and defense industry, we've seen military border protection applied or modified or adapted to critical infrastructure protection in general, and then critical infrastructure protection technologies modified and adapted to the oil and gas industry, to oil and gas installations. Of course, clearly traditional technologies, which have been around forever, like camera systems, smart fences, access control, biometrics, and all the classic technologies that are used to to, uh, to uh, protect any kind of a business or any kind of an infrastructure have been around for many decades and continue to be an essential part of security systems. However, many large installations now have adopted new military types of technologies. Examples of technologies adopted by, by, from aerospace and defense. For example, radars. Radars were specifically designed for military applications to detect both land-based and air-based intrusion are now an integral part of many of the more critical, uh, um, critical security systems, even in the oil and gas sector. These are usually combined and, and with advanced day and night electro-optic systems uh, including thermal cameras, LIDAR, and many, many other electro-optic technologies. And again, they're combined with advanced image processing systems, such as video motion detection, video tracking, face recognition for tracking applications, etc., etc. 
On top of this, there are smart fences, integrated seismic, acoustic, magnetic, and vibration sensing as needed. Of course, advanced algorithms that can help detect threats, either just with these sensors or these sensors together with some of the other sensors, again, as the application demands. We have fully integrated manned and unmanned vehicle patrols. What do I mean by fully integrated? Fully integrated means that it's not that somebody's driving around in a, in a manned vehicle, but that this person is connected in a, on, in, on a real-time basis, with, and the data is connected in a real-time basis with the data in the, in the uh, c command and control system. Um, sensor and data fusion, and fully integrated and unified command and control systems. Uh, no longer do we have separated, separate screens for every single sensor, but we try as much as possible to have everything integrated into one, uh, one very, very unified command system and uh, uh, together with sensor and data fusion. Now that systems are linked and network, we run into the, the classic issues of cybersecurity. And clearly, the oil and gas industry has and will take a lot of these technologies from, um, from aerospace and defense, although I'm sure there's many, many other fields in which they can take some of the technologies from as well. When we extend to offshore oil and gas platforms, there's, of course, other, and I wrote, I wrote all tankers, I mean, ocean-based um, oil and gas and uh, liquid natural gas and whatever uh, installations in the water, um, then you may in addition have to integrate other sensors or other, other systems. Uh, specialized radars for marine environment. These were also developed for the, uh, for the uh, defense, technology, defense industry. Um, we're talking about radars that can detect boats and swimmers and waves, and etc. Underwater fences, sonar, um, underwater patrols. Again, these are technologies that are not only in the aerospace and defense, but a lot of the work has been done in that industry. And these are integrated into a fully integrated command control and decision support systems. Now, these examples demonstrate how classic military solutions can be applied to dealing with new and evolving threats to commercial installations. Much of this, the work for this technology adaptation was motivated by a broad range of security applications and just moved directly over to oil and gas applications. There are, however, many new challenges which are not simply taken from, aerospace, from, from security to oil and gas and require more effort and new ideas and where aerospace and defense technologies will play an important role. So this leads me to my second example, which is an example of pipeline protection. Let me tell you from the start that this is a difficult problem. It's a problem that is still being worked on and complete, um, complete, completely encompassing solutions, in my opinion, don't yet exist. Pipelines need to be protected from a variety of threats. The dominant examples are terrorism or other vandalism, theft, and leaks. And there are, of course, others. Now, both vandalism and leaks can lead to huge environmental damage. The result is also a huge financial cost to the industry. Not only in cleaning up the mess, but also in potential backlash from citizens and governments with resulting problems in approval of new projects. Much work has been done, but a significant amount of R&D remains to be done in the development of technologies for pipeline protection. The most challenging case is that of long pipelines, often thousands of kilometers going through varied and complex terrain. Site protection technologies prove too cumbersome. Nonetheless, many aerospace and defense technologies have been applied to this problem, and some new technologies have been specifically developed to meet these challenges. We do use radar and electro-optic sensors, although typically not for hundreds or thousands of kilometers, typically they're used for specific areas. One of the more exciting developments in the past decade has been fiber sensors for long distance vibration and possibly intrusion and leakage monitoring. Some other examples are UAV, that have been tried are UAV patrols, UAV and satellite based surveillance, multispectral and hyperspectral imaging, satellites, uh, integrated and unified flow sensing, better, better flow, flow measurements, better flow control over very, very long distances, 
And one of the things I'd just like to mention is further improvements in pipeline design. Uh, we heard just before that people are, st are using mostly steel pipes. I know there's been some protection mechanisms for, for increasing the lifetime of these pipes and keeping them from leaking. But one, of the, one example could be using uh, technologies from structural health monitoring where, for example, you could use com maybe possibly composite pipeline materials with fiber sensing built in from the construction phase. Finally, let me get to the example of unconventional oil and gas. Extraction of oil and gas from unconventional sources, such as oil sands and fracking, provide a range of new challenges for the oil and gas industry. Technologies that have been developed in this area lead to significant environmental concerns. These technologies are prime suspects in every environmental event that occurs anywhere around such an operation. So therefore, we need technologies not only for improvement in operation, but also for environmental monitoring, as well as for respond responding to environmental concerns. In fact, you know, we have two choices. One choice is to try to convince everyone that their environmental concerns are unfounded. Another one is to try to use technology to try to improve the situation. Some of the technolog technological issues include water quality monitoring, monitoring of environmental damage to wildlife and plant life, challenges of safe transportation, and sensing in extreme environments like high temperature and pressure. And I give some examples of technologies that might be able to deal with these. Fiber optic sensing, for example, could be applied to sensing in high pressure and temperature environments, uh, multispectral, hyperspectral, and radar imaging for water and vegetation monitoring, use of UAVs, use of satellites, etc. Okay, my time is pretty much gone, so uh, let me give you a summary. The current growth of the local oil and gas industry resulting from discoveries in Israel provide a great boost for all those who have traditionally been involved in oil and gas technologies at all levels. In addition, Israeli companies, both large and small, as a group, have a vast amount of experience in aerospace and defense technologies. Many of these technologies can be adapted to solving current and future problems of the oil and gas industry. A strong R&D effort in this direction could provide a new market, both in Israel and worldwide, for many of the technologies which have been developed over the past decades in the aerospace and defense industry. Thank you very much. <laughs>